Thank you so much for attending, for y'all watching live. It's Monday night, so congratulations, everyone. We made it. Let's learn some new stuff. Um, yay. So for everyone live, yay. Thanks for watching. And just be mindful that we're a whole group of adults learning. We're beginners. So just be kind in the comments, ask questions. You know, we're all at different stages. Uh, reminder to not take your Zoom into the bathroom. We're not trying to do that. Not that time of video. Um, and yeah, so excited you're here. So um, we're gonna go through materials first, but I'm gonna go through the whole project and I'm gonna have questions at the end. So I may go through it as we're talking, but feel free to drop them in the chat as you think of them. And at the end, I'll go through and be like, all right, what do we got? Let's go. That's one of the fun parts of watching live. All right. So materials, um, we saw online on Michael's that we need a couple different things to make our little ghosties. We need tracing paper, which is something I absolutely love and is really important. We need this sweet, sweet holographic paper. It's 12 by 12 and is actually a sticker, which we're gonna get into later, but it's super fun material. We need good old scotch tape, this awesome monofilament, which is kind of like fishing wire. It's crafty, it's clear. Once you have it, you realize you can do a lot of fun things with it. Full punch, classic, underrated tool. These scissors, these are my favorite. Uh, they're small, they're tiny, but they're made for cutting sticky things. And I just, you know, if you have petite hands as well, you love a tiny scissor. And then our classic scissors, because we need those as well. These are the ghost templates that I made not that we can't see. Um, and these were the printouts to go with the class. Now you can freehand your own ghosts. I fully support that. But these are just, you know, suggested shapes to get you going on your ghostly journey. We need a pencil. We need ruler. All right. On your mark, it's a ghost. So we are going to start with our 12 by 12 sweet, sweet, shiny paper. You can, of course, pick different papers based on your decor, your style, whatever you like. This is just what caught my fancy. And I'm gonna peel off the sticker. And we're gonna make a grid. So this is 12 by 12 inches. We're gonna make a grid on the back so we can get 12 ghosties. So each 12 ghosts, we're gonna make rectangles that are four inches by three inches wide. And I'm just gonna write that so we all can see on the back of one of my ghosts. Four by three inches. That's our little rectangle. Ooh. Okay. We take our ruler. We're gonna mark it three, six, nine. Go all the way down. You can mark it three, six, and nine. And we're going to get to connect the lines. I'm just using our pencil. All right, we've got columns, four columns that are three inches wide. Fantastic. Turn the paper the other way. And to get our rectangles to be four by three, now we're gonna make three columns that are four inches wide. So I'm gonna take my ruler and make a tick at four inches and at eight inches. I'm gonna go down to the bottom, make a little mark. Run at four inches, run at eight inches. And I'm gonna connect the lines, connect our little ticks to make our line. All right, and now we have 12 spooky rectangles. And these are four by three inches each. And we'll just make another little 
mark. But some people are visual. It's me. I'm visual. Okay, this is my favorite part, my super favorite fun creeping paper trick. So um, if you are following along, you're playing along, you printed out the template at home, yours will be printed on uh, printer paper. That's fine. You can do this with anything. So we've got our ghost shape. You know what? I'll put some scrap paper underneath so you can see this better. I'm going to pick this shape and we're going to transfer it onto here. So this is where our tracing paper comes in. I'm going to grab a sheet of tracing paper, put it on top of our printed out ghosts, like so. And I'm just going to take my pencil and retrace the outline. I like to move my paper around when I do this. You don't have to, this is just personal preference. You have to then reline it up, but. So we have one ghost. Perfect. We now can go to our fancy paper that we put our grid on and we're gonna flip it over. So our pencil lead is on this side, right? So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna write up because that's where our original lead is. I'm going to flip the side with the lead over onto our fancy paper and I'm going to retrace this line and we're going to press down and put some lead onto the back of here so it'll transfer that lead. This is one of my favorite tricks. So all I'm doing again is just flipping it over and tracing the line we traced on the back side and now we've put some of that ink down on the other side. Yeah, it's spooky magic. Sometimes if I move around, I just like to lift my page and see, is my line where I thought it is? Awesome. So there we have, we just transferred our ghost onto our fancy paper. So I did this pretty light, um, but if you, Need to just go back over so you can see better. Since we're on camera, I'm going to darken these lines for everyone. But I like having a light line. Anyway, this is the back. So we've got our amazing go see. Let's cut the first one out. So I'm going to take my big scissors. And when I'm cutting things, I like to break them down into smaller sheets. So rather than cutting out our cute ghost and moving around this whole big paper, it's kind of unwieldy, so I'm going to cut out our rectangle. And now when we cut out this ghost in the curves, it's going to be a lot smaller that we're moving around with. I just find it to be a lot more manageable. All right. Ghost number one. This is where our favorite scissors come in. If you don't have these, that's okay. Um, honestly, a kitty scissor would work or just whatever scissors that are your favorite. And we're just gonna start cutting out. Shiny. When I cut around curves, I like to kind of move my paper as well as my blade. So I think that gets the smoothest curve. But sometimes we see if you cut something, it's like crick, crick, crick around the curve and it's still got some points. Now, if that happens, we'll show how to fix that. But 
in my experience, if you kind of move the paper as you're cutting, you can get a pretty smooth curve. Now, I like to start a little trash pile off the side. It just makes life a little easier to kind of clean up as you work. And now, we've got this small curve here, so I'm really going to cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut. I'm going to have to fix this one. That's okay. Maybe too much. This one got a little pointy in the middle. That's great. We'll clean it up. I'm just going to go back. I like to make this a little rounder. I think on my template it was a sharp edge. Oh, it was a little round. We'll just round it out. Look on the front. I'm going to fix this just to make it a little more curvy. But you know, this isn't a exact measurement we have to meet. So if you decide that you want to make all your ghosts, you know, have little edges that are like this, that are jagged because it's easier to cut, that's totally fine. But I like these little kind of fun scallopy bottoms. So we got ghost number one. Hooray. Let's put some eyes on it. I'm going to take some of the scraps, right? This was just the outside of that rectangle. And a good rule of thumb is if you're doing something new and you don't want to do it on your piece, grab some scrap and try it there. So I'm going to take my whole punch and just practice punching a hole through this paper. Well, it's two-sided, right? It's our sticky holographic side and our paper side. So this didn't fully cut clean. Sometimes that happens. So I'm actually just gonna push the hole, push our sticky part through the hole and that kind of fixes that edge. But I like to practice just having, you know, you have really have to punch hard because we're going through a, stick, a sticky paper and a bit of cardstock. So we have spooky eyeballs. This one seemed to work better going through the front side, right? It just depends. Okay. So that's how we're making our eyeballs. I'm gonna freehand it. We're gonna go from the top and eyeball our eyeballs and say, yeah, I think about up here looks pretty good. Side. That's pretty good. Second eyeball. All right. So we've got our first ghost ready to party. Scrap out the way. Scraps out of here. So this paper is awesome because it's holographic. And it's a sticker. 
So if you peel the backing off, now that you've got it cut out, you peel the backing off, it's got adhesive. So you can go run and make these stickers. Correct. So now you have ghost stickers if you want them. So now half of you just left because you're running and putting ghosts on everything, which I totally understand. Um, but so you can turn these into stickers or you can keep going and we'll put little loops on these so we can hang them. All right. This is where our super cool thin monofilament comes in, which is basically craft fishing wire. So you know where you're thinking about hanging yours, but for my string of lights that I hung them on in the photos, I cut a four inch piece of monofilament. Now it depends on what lights you wanna hang them from. You may need to make it a little shorter or longer, but it's quite easy to take your string, locate your ruler. <laughs> Cut off a four inch piece. Grab it end to end and just go walk up and hold it to wherever you're gonna hang it from and think, is this enough or do I need it to be smaller to get it to hang on? So that's just a little bit of experiment, but whatever length you think makes sense for wherever you're hanging it. In this case, we're gonna go with the four inches. I literally just put the two ends in half, it's quite hard to see. So I'm just, I bent it in half. Now we've got the two ends here in a loop. I'm gonna grab our ghosty. What's up, buddy? Put this on top. The good thing about the monofilament is it's hard to see. The bad thing is that it's hard to see for you on camera. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some tape. And we're literally just gonna tape these to the back. So it looks like for some of these, I used artist tape. So I may have put that in our I may have put that in, in our materials. Chanel, let me know if that's wrong. Chanel is our amazing moderator. Um, but regardless, if you're using scotch or artist tape, I'm gonna use artist tape for this because it's gonna be easier for y'all to see. because it's white rather than clear. So I'm cut off a nice little square. It needs to be smaller because our ghosty space is small. And just like this one, we're just gonna make, come here, string. We're gonna make a loop put these two ends together just to, just to let you know lauren you did add scotch tape to the um supply list i did do scotch tape thank you so much for checking okay cool i'll use artist tape because it's easier for them to see but it's scotch tape is the same animal artist tape is great it's just opaque rather than scotch tape which is transparent as we know And I just taped our little loop onto the back of the ghost. There's about, about half an inch that's taped on for our little loop, like an inch and a quarter, you know, inch and an eighth, give or take. And now we have a cute little hanging ghosty that you can go hang from anywhere. And that's what we did with our other shapes, right? We did the same thing where we took our template, we took a piece of trace, we traced it over, right? So we'll just do a cute little mouth, right? 
we flipped it over and put it onto our paper. We traced the other side and transferred it. We cut it out. We hole punched our eyes. And then we get our string and made it hang. So it's super fun. You get to pick what little shapes you want to do for your templates, whatever, you know, speaks to your ghoulish heart. Um, but this will make 12. So we've got these. So let's pretend you've got all your ghosts cut out. You're ready to party. The other part of this class is I wanted to talk about how to style garlands because um, I think there's so much fun and it's so easy to build your own rather than buy your own. It's a lot more cost efficient and you get to make them yourself. And that's why we're here is because we want to make things. So my rule of thumb when I'm making garlands is threefold. It's lights, fabric, ornaments. So instead of lights, camera, action, we're going to get whatever lights you like. Um, I recommended a pair that's similar to these on michaels.com. These I've had for a couple years, but they're fun orange lights. Of course, you use whatever makes you happy. And then for fabric, I drape this cotton gauze. People call it a creepy cloth, but really, you can see it. It's just this like black open weave cotton. So it's a gauze. And what I do, as you can tell, kind of over the years, sometimes I distress it. So I'll kind of pull it and just make it look old and witchy. And just a little distress. So cotton gauze is really inexpensive and it's fun. You can really put anywhere on it. So what we do is what I like to do is you grab your light, you pick whatever fabric. So fabric right now, for example, I'm using this creepy black cloth, but come holiday time, like some fun ribbon could be nice, you know, whatever that means to you. But I like having three different elements to layer your garland for visual interest. And then the ornament in this case is stringing our little ghost babies all around it. So I'm gonna try and Remake this where y'all can see, but you know, we're on Zoom, so we're doing what we can here. But if you will, when I hung it, I would literally just take my, my lights, <laughs> take my, I would hang my lights, and then I would drape my fabric and kind of just make it messy. Sometimes it covers the lights, sometimes it doesn't. You know, there's no right or wrong, especially in Halloween where that distressed look is kind of fun. And I'm gonna push some of these lights through my creepy cloth because I don't care if it gets holes in it. That's kind of the vibe. And then I'll take some of my ghosties and I'll hang it from the lights. And so that's just what I did for the photos in this. I strung it across my little alcove over there and it's super fun. If I can pick up another ghost, that would be helpful. So whatever makes sense for you. And if you need to, based on your lights, if you have smaller lights, you can go ahead and just make the string smaller. And that's how I spookify my garland. And again, for, you know, come new year, maybe a string of white lights and like some white or gold ribbon might be nice. A couple like, you know, metallic ornaments could be really fun. This is just like a, like a formula I have that, um, people always ask me, oh, where'd you buy that? I'm like, oh, I made it. And it's just fun because you get to customize everything. So I wanted to share that as well. Be gone. Okay, so this is a quick one, but sometimes they don't have to be lengthy crafts because we got some good tips and tricks here. We know how to cut out our ornaments. We know how to string them if we want or peel them and make them stickers. And then we can go ahead and put them anywhere we want. So I want to thank everyone so much for watching. If you're on the Instagram, um, please follow at probably sketch. I'll be posting more of the silly fun things I'm doing. And um, I have all Halloween classes 
every week until Halloween. So if you are a spooky, spooky fan like myself, you'll be in delight because I'm doing Halloween crafts for the rest of, <laughs> the rest of September and October. So I can't wait. And um, if you, you know, that's, that's my craft. So if you have questions, I would love to answer them. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate y'all. Um, if you're on Instagram and you do anything, tag me at probably sketch. I would love to see what you make. That's, that's the joy. If you had fun, please share, you know, that's the whole point of this is to share and have fun and, uh, make some stuff. Use our hands. Okay. We do have one question for you, Lauren. thousand percent. Can you show how to do the string to hang the ghosts again? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. The great thing about this string is that it's really hard to see, uh, but it's really hard to see. So I'm actually going to grab just as a, just to make it easier to see, I'm going to grab some other string really quick. Cause it's the same thing. Luckily, I have some hemp twine here. And this is just an example, but you can use this too, right? Like, you know, this is just a jumping off point. You make your crafts your own. We don't have any rules. We're just here to have fun. I'm just gonna un undo the one we just did. One of the benefits of artist tape is that it's easy to remove. So we could peel that off, no problem. Okay. So for my string lights, I cut a four inch ish piece of monofilament. Excuse me. And again, if you, um, a lot of crafting is going up to things and measuring it and uh, being like, what? <laughs> so for my spooky lights, um, I, I cut a four inch strand, but the ones online on Michael's are a little smaller. So I would say, let's start with three inches. So we'll do, a three inch strand. And all I did was take my string, fold it in half. So we have a loop and we have ends. I flipped over my ghost. And then our case, scotch tape is perfectly fine because it's clear on the back. But just so you can see this better, I'm just gonna cut some artist tape. And I'm just going to cut a little rectangle. I'm just going to eyeball it so it fits above our ghosty forehead. Perfect. I'm going to take the ends and just tape down the ends above the forehead so I have a little loop. That's just what we have with the monofilament. It's just clear, so it's very hard to see. And that's it. And if you like this hemp twine aesthetic, do that. You know, um, that's a great thing. You can really do whatever makes sense for you. I like the hemp. I like the clear because, you know, we want to look at the ghosts more and not necessarily the strength. But this is all just personal preference. And that's it. So you can hang these from your fairy lights. You can hang these from your lights, whatever you want. Um, it might be fun if you have a chandelier to hang them around the bulbs of your chandelier, around the, the arms, that could be really fun. You know, go crazy, treat them like ornaments, have a blast, be spooky, haunt things. Do you have any other questions? No, that was it for questions, but we did have a couple comments. Um, Sherry said, very creative. Celeste says, thanks. I was thinking of using fairy lights, but I like the orange lights. And yes, Robert says, thank you, Lauren. So, I'm sorry. And I said, Robert said, thank you, Lauren. 
Oh, thank you all. Thank you so much. I hope this was fun. I hope it got some good th thought starters. I hope you learned some things. The tracing paper, paper technique is a game changer. So I love that. I hope you can use that for other fun stuff and that you have tiny, shiny ghosties in your home this, this spooky season. That's that's all I have, unless um, anyone has any other questions. All right, well, thank yeah, you all I so much. Yeah, I think you're good. All right, thanks, y'all.